Good evening and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend. I'm Samantha Casessa and I'm here at the 14th annual Soho International Film Festival for the New York premiere of Asian Persuasion. Later I'll be talking to some of the filmmakers and the stars of the movie here on the red carpet, but first here's a quick word from our sponsors. Sponsored by Black Magic Design, the world's highest quality products for the feature film, post and broadcast industries. Blackmagicdesign.com and by JMR Rentals, professional, digital, cinema and broadcast equipment rentals in Brooklyn, New York. JMRNY.com. I have the pleasure of being joined by Jet Talentino, the director of Asian Persuasion. Tell me, Jet, what are you feeling tonight going into this festival? What are you excited about the audience getting to see from your film? I'm excited for those who haven't seen it. You know, they've been asking me, are you nervous? No, I'm not. I'm not nervous. I'm very excited for those who haven't seen it. And I want the audience to be able to take a step back, take a deep breath, and, you know, say, wait, wait, this kind of Asian storytelling is something new. Because, you know, we don't have any superpowers or any ninja kind of thing. This is just regular um, uh, New Yorker, but just Asian American. It could be anybody. And tell me about those everyday New Yorkers. Who are these characters that we're following? What's the central story? Yeah, so the story is centered on this down in his luck, frustrated chef, played by Dante Basco, and he is divorced with, uh, from his 15-year uh, uh, marriage with uh, Casey Concepcion. And Dante is so proud that he didn't even consult a, a lawyer. He just signed it, he signed the divorce paper, and only to find out that he can never afford any of the alimony and child support. So he was like, wait a minute, how do I do this? So with the help of his swingman, played by Kevin Kreider of Bling Empire, they put up this fake uh, dating profile of, of Casey Concepcion online. And then they found this, un, you know, this suitor in Paolo Montalban, and then Dante was coaching him on how to court his ex-wife. He knows everything, of course, from the flower, movie, uh, food. So Paolo and Casey are falling in love, and then Dante watched horrified, and he was like, wait, I still have feelings for her. You know, he wants to win her back, but he might be too late. You know, we as audiences have been missing these kind of rom-coms, these kind of stories that you're talking about. It has not been as common to see rom-coms as we have in decades past. What do you think has been missing about rom-coms, and what do you what do you think is the magic that makes those stories really click for so many audiences? Well, you know, because most rom-coms, as they say, they're all predictable. I can, I can assure you that you can never predict the ending of this film. Because I, I, like, I don't like any films that I can predict the ending. I don't like to read books. If, if my anticipation matched the ending, I don't like that. I want to be left like broken and uh, provoked. You know, that to me is art. And it has to be both ways. That we, we let the audiences be, participate in our storytelling and give them the agency to, you know, to follow the story. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Not spoon feeding. Precisely. And, you know, you are doing an amazing thing as well behind the scenes in that you have an incredible representation of cultures and communities from all over Asia. Tell me a little bit more about that process and if that was, you know, a very intentional, important thing for you. Yeah, it, it was a very inten intentional thing. Me and my producing partner, Mike Eng, who happens to be our screenwriter, from the beginning, we had this sacred oath that we have to provide opportunity for our Asian American filmmakers because it seems like nobody else is doing it. So if you don't do it, we'll just be left. And, you know, we focus on hiring uh, Asian women. We have 10 women department heads, and that's like unheard of. And, you know, and they're very grateful because they've been in the industry for over a decade and they've always been assistants. And like nobody gave them the deciding hat. So that by itself is a win. And we, yeah, we walk the talk. We have to make sure that uh, we continue on. 21 Asian countries are represented in this film. Yeah. Incredible, incredible. You are also a big music guy, right? Yeah. You are a Tony winner, you are a Grammy winner, you are, music has been such a big part of your career. To what extent is music part of this project as well? It is, it is a big part of, of all of my project actually because as a Recording Academy voting member, I make sure that I make spaces and I love the talent discovery. I usually just look them up on Instagram and then if I like them, I would message them and you know talk that I have this film because I like the process that I send out the artist, the script itself and that the original composition is intentionally written 
and composed based on the script. So in Ancient Persuasion, we have 22 songs and 18 of the original songs were written specifically, specifically based off of the script. Wow. And so lastly, tell me about what you have coming up, if there's anything you want to plug or just tell us where we can find you online and hear more about what you're up to. I'm on Instagram at jet.tolentino and also at Asian Persuasion Film. What's coming up is we've announced it this already. I'm producing with Rosario Dawson for my next film, uh, Relive. Uh, we're supposed to do that on Guam this year, but then, you know, the super typhoon Mawar ravaged the island. So we're on pause. Hopefully we'll do that next year. I am joined by Dante Bosco, one of the lead actors in Asian Persuasion here at the Soho Film Festival. Tell me, Dante, what are you excited about when it comes to this movie? What about the story really made you want to latch on? Well, uh, I just, it's really amazing. My first time shooting in New York City, uh, and that was really, really kind of a phenomenal thing. And then also working with some great actors who've been friends of mine for many years, uh, like Paolo Montalban. We've known each other since our days in L.A. and as, a, you know, cool young actors and us finally getting to work together in the film like this and really great and Casey Concepcion who's a celebrity in the Philippines and I've known her mother and her and so really working with them has been really wonderful and then getting to work with Jet Tolentino the director and Broadway producer so being a part of the Filipino community and the whole what's going on with Asians in Hollywood over the last few years and being this golden age and really being bringing the Filipino stories to be a part of uh, the rising tide of what's going on. It's, been, it's really phenomenal. Absolutely. We also, this is a rom-com, which we have not seen as much of in the past decade or so. Rom-coms have been not as popular as they were before that, but we know that they are loved and missed by audiences. What do you think has been missing about rom-coms lately that we're bringing with this film? It is true. Uh, that's also one of the things that attracted me to the project, because it's, it's my first rom-com, actually. And when uh, Jet offered me the film, I mean, to play the lead in it, I, I really it was like... It was cool. I mean, I get to be a father and uh, rom-com. I think a lot of us are, you know, it's a guilty pleasure, these rom-coms that we've all grown up with. And I just think, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why they've been gone for so long. But it's great to kind of get my shot to do one and, and uh, you know, I don't know. I'm like, am I supposed to be funny? Is the, is the situation funny or am I funny? Or is it just all so sad that it's funny? I don't know. Culturally, this film, just from behind the scenes on the screen, has so much representation from tons and tons of different Asian communities and cultures. Was there anything personally for you in the film that you're like, wow, that's so cool that I get to see this. This has been a while, if ever, that I've seen this on film. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't, I, you know, I can't wait to see how it turns out. But again, like you said, like the, a, a bunch of different cultures in the film, Kevin and Celia, Korean and. Uh, Chinese and Filipino, like all of us kind of interacting and having subtle differences of what's going on, but inside jokes. And it's, I can't wait to see it all on screen together. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm just as excited as everyone else to see the film. Amazing. And what do you think the audience is going to feel? What do you think is going to be the main takeaway? Um, are they going to feel more reflective? Are they going to just have laughed so hard, maybe cried, or some of all the above? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm just an audience member tonight, so I'm going to be rolling uh, on taking the ride with the audience. And we'll see. And we'll see how we feel. I, I hope uh, people can kind of feel a little love, a little hurt, a little all that, you know. Everything you're supposed to feel in a rom-com. I look forward to all that. <laughs> Amazing. And finally, tell me, where can we find you online if we want to see more from you, hear about what you have coming up and stuff like that? Yeah, just, you know, uh, you can follow me on IG and whatnot at Dante Bosco, or my TikTok is hot right now, Rufio Zuko. So check it out. I am here at the Soho International Film Festival with Casey Concepcion. Tell me, Casey, how does it feel to be here at Soho and how excited are you for people to get to see this movie? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. This is a full-on Asian-American production from the, from the front of the camera to the back of the camera, all Asian, all Asian-American. And I think that was such a feat. It was really such a feat and we overcame every single obstacle and now we're here and let's just have fun. It's a fun-loving movie. It's nice and light and like young and just fun. So it's great. It's nice. It has a little Filipino touch to it. I'm, a, I'm actually Filipino um, and it's just I feel like it's really there's really a lot of space right now for Asians and Filipinos and that's absolutely amazing. Was there anything in the film you know 
in Filipino culture where you saw that in the script or once it was on screen, you said, oh my God, I can't believe I'm getting to see this I on mean, screen. a thousand percent. I mean, it is an American film and yet it has kind of like the heart of the Filipino. And I just found it so great to be able to have the opportunity to do a movie like that right now. Like 2023 is the year for that, you know? It's just such a great feeling to actually be Asian and to have these mainstream stories and we don't need to be like the superhero or like the token sort of you know it's it's our story like we have our stories too and we are Asian and Asian Americans too and you know it's just great to be able to tell a normal person's story and not be typecast it's just like one ethnicity one race it's, it's really nice to be able to do that and yeah. what about your character specifically stuck out to you and made you so excited to get to know her better I mean really this is about a divorced couple trying to see if they're gonna get back together or not and I think there's just so much love amidst the hate and just all of the things that come with a divorce to be able to you know talk about forgiveness but also there's just it's, it's a crazy film it's fun film just a lot of heart as well yeah absolutely and lastly where can we find you online if we want to hear more about you and follow along well you can follow me on Instagram Christina with a K Concepcion so, yeah, and I'm all over my socials. I'm on YouTube and everything. So I'll see you guys there. Perfect. Thank you, Casey. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We're so excited for you here at the Soho International Film Festival. And congratulations. Thank you. I am joined by Mike Ang, the incredible screenwriter of Asian Persuasion. Mike, I wish people could understand just how crazy the vibe is in here right now in terms of the excitement for your film. How does it feel to have this huge community of people behind you celebrating your movie? It just feels like love, and, and that's what this movie is about. It's about love. It's about second chances. Um, it's just about, you know, just being human. Uh, I, I know it says Asian in the title, but it's actually just about sharing our experiences and similarities with each other, you know? I think what's really been missing is you don't really see a lot of uh, Asian rom-com, Asian cast rom-coms that actually are just about a normal story that doesn't really have anything to do with being Asian. I think that's part of what's really important about um, the messaging of this movie. It's almost like we share the same experiences. We're Asian. If you're not Asian, it doesn't really matter because we all grew up here in, you know, if we're Americans, we're Americans, we grew up in this, in this country and we share similar experiences and we're all human, so we all make mistakes and we all want second chances. What particular cultural, you know, traditions, references were you wanting to make sure had a place in this film that you had not seen before? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, I moved to New York about 16 years ago and um, it's really become my home. And so what I really wanted to do, and I've always loved this in Hollywood, is all these classical New York love stories. And I wanted to kind of take that and, and do something with it and, and kind of create my own classical New York love story. I don't know how classic it's going to be, but, you know, let's just wait and see. <laughs> and you have such an incredible team of both on screen and behind the screen. You have an incredible representation of Asian cultures from all over. Tell me about what that process was like for you and, and if there was you know, a lot of intention behind making sure you had that. Sure, so from the very start, my uh, co-producer Jet Tolentino and I, we said no matter what, the most important thing for us was to create a movie that at its very core DNA was very authentic. And even if that meant making it a harder film to shoot, even if it meant making it harder for us to find the right people. We prioritize women first, people of color, and LGBTQIA+. So literally for us, that was what we wanted to do. And even if it was a hard thing to do, we wanted to get it out there because my, my opinion's always been you have to bring up our community and we can't do that without all of us working together. And what do you think the audience is going to feel walking out of this? Do you think they're going to be uh, tear soaked? Do you think they're going to be stomach hurts from laughing, a little bit of everything? I think it's going to be a little bit of everything. This is a very different rom-com than I think other ones that I've watched. Uh, I think it's got, you know, I, I won't spoil the ending, but, but you know, I, I, like, I like endings where you kind of have to make a decision for yourself. Absolutely. And lastly, tell me, Mike, where can we find you online if we want to make sure that we are following along with everything that you have coming up? Yes, yeah, so our movie is uh, on Instagram, at Asian Persuasion Film. 
Thank you so much for joining us for our coverage of the 14th annual Soho International Film Festival here in New York City. A special shout out to everyone who came to chat with me during the festival. If you enjoyed our content and you'd like to see more, please visit our website at norestforthewekendpodcast.com. A special thank you to our sponsors, Black Magic Design and JMR Rentals. I'm Samantha Cassassa for Behind the Rapid Productions, and we'll see you next time.